As early as 1923, David Sarnoff, now president of the Radio Corporation of America, recognized the possibility of developing a television system. In an historic memorandum to RCA directors, he had this to say, quote, I believe that television, which is the technical name for seeing as well as hearing by radio, will come to pass in due course, unquote. Sixteen years have passed since that visionary report. Now David Sarnoff is ready to introduce television to America and to the world as an industry and art, and not merely as a novelty as so many people have previously thought. He is about to predict why television will have great impact on our lives. His message, the birth of an industry. David Sarnoff's appearance before the television cameras in front of the RCA exhibition building at the New York World's Fair 1939 marks the first coverage by television of a news event. His appearance also represents the introduction to the public of black and white television on a commercial basis. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am sorry that Mr. Whalen is unavoidably prevented from being with us today. All about us, we see proof of his vision and ability and that of his able staff. It is fitting that the greatest World's Fair in history should be the scene for the first public showing of one of the most significant technical and social advances of modern times. When one views the wonderful social and industrial developments embodied in the exhibits at the New York World's Fair, he has reason to be proud of the ingenuity of his fellow men. All about us here today, in scores of great buildings, are exhibits which testify to the unwillingness of man to remain satisfied with the marvels of our present civilization. They prove his ability to bring to practical use and service today and tomorrow the dreams of past generations. This RCA exhibit building, which we are dedicating here, houses only a small part of all the scientific advances displayed on these grounds. But the services to mankind shown here represent one of the outstanding advances that has been made in this century to overcome limitations imposed by nature and to bring the peoples of the world into closer contact. Today, we are on the eve of launching a new industry based on imagination, on scientific research and accomplishment. We are now ready to fulfill the promise made to the public last October when, after years of research, laboratory experiments, and tests in the field costing millions of dollars, the Radio Corporation of America announced that television program service and commercial television receivers would be made available to the public with the opening of the New York World's Fair. Ten days from now, this will be an accomplished fact. The long years of patient experimenting and ingenious invention which the scientists of the RCA research laboratories have put into television development have been crowned with success. I salute their accomplishments and those of other scientists, both here and abroad, whose efforts have contributed to the progress of this new art. On April 30th, the National Broadcasting Company will begin the first regular public television program service in the history of our country, and television receiving sets will be in the hands of merchants in the New York area for public purchase. A new art and a new industry, which eventually will provide entertainment and information for millions, and new employment for large numbers of men and women, is here. There is something tremendously inspiring to all of us in the RCA family in launching a new service whose purpose is constructive into a world where destruction is rampant. We have all been impressed of late 
by the ease with which things can be destroyed compared with the skill and the labor that go into their making. Human aspiration and intelligence are at constant war with the forces of reaction and destruction. When a major victory is won, civilization is able to make a giant stride forward. The coming of radio was one of those victories. After ages in which nature had maintained the barriers of time and distance between men and nations, radio eliminated them and enabled man to send a whisper around the earth. And now we add radio sight to sound. It is with a feeling of humbleness that I come to this moment of announcing the birth in this country of a new art so important in its implications that it is bound to affect all society. It is an art which shines like a torch of hope in a troubled world. It is a creative force which we must learn to utilize for the benefit of all mankind. The miracle of engineering skill which one day will bring the world to the home also brings a new American industry to serve man's material welfare. In less than two decades, sound broadcasting provided new work for hundreds of thousands of men and women, added work in mines and forests and factories for thousands more, and aided the country and its citizens economically by causing the flow of hundreds of millions of dollars annually. Television again bids fair to follow in its youthful parents' footsteps and to inherit its vigor and initiative. When it does, it will become an important factor in American economic life. Also, as an entertainment adjunct, television will supplement sound broadcasting by bringing into the home the visual images of scenes and events which up to now have come there as mind pictures conjured up by the human voice. Time does not permit me to describe the many other exhibits in this building. They demonstrate important radio services and instrumentalities, such as facsimile, which transmits printed words and pictures through the air. The automatic emergency alarm, which is adding immeasurably to the safety of those who travel by sea, and the significant services for message communications by land and sea and in the air. In dedicating this RCA building as the birthplace of a new American art and industry, we have in mind the conception of a great service which will benefit our social and economic life and the national ideals of our people. The television receiving sets about us today and millions of their like to follow will serve to bring about these practical results and to foster these ideals. They represent radio's world of tomorrow. With this address, David Sarnoff, 